we're back. Okay, so, talking. Um, we decided to do another episode with just us because you guys tend to ask a lot of things about relationship, love, how do we keep it together, how do we make all sorts of positive vibes all the time. I was going to say make love, that would have been bad. How do we make the love exist? How do, you know, just all the things about a healthy relationship and kind of motivating each other and pushing forward and being real partners. You know, I think a lot of people struggle in relationships and if there's one thing we've learned in our short time being married but our longer time dating, which for all of you, if you don't know, we've been dating for eight years. It'll be eight years in December. Eight years in December and we've been married for... Two. Two. Three years in May, two and a half. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're going to jump into it. I don't, we don't really know where this episode's going. Nor do I know where most episodes are headed, to be quite honest, but we just kind of throw it at the wall and see what happens. Um, so the first question a lot of you ask is how we met, which there used to be a video online, but it got taken down from Man Repeller, which is Do you Leandra. Know? Yeah, know? it's no longer on there. Well, we met in Miami. Mm-hmm. In a nightclub. In a nightclub. I was coming off of a breakup. Hannah was coming off of a breakup. A pretty big... She thought it was the one? I, I mean... I would Young have, love. I would have gone the distance at the time, but I was super unhappy and I just didn't know. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> I mean, how many of you guys have been there, though? Like, I don't know. Putting in the work and, like, receiving nothing and thinking, like, that's normal. Like, no, that's, that's not normal. Um, but that's young love for you. Yeah. Which was... Young love for me, I was in a series of relationships before, just like anyone was, thinking, do I really love this person? I think I do. This is the real love. The last one wasn't. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to marry your, your high school girlfriend. That's true. I dated my high school girlfriend for four years. And so Hannah was coming off a breakup. She was on a girl's trip with all her girlfriends yeah. in Miami. They were going to Art Basel to kind of light it up, let off some steam. Get single Hannah back in the mix, but little did they know, I, I would appear. I actually met Brendan the first night I was in Miami. The first night of the of girls' course, trip? Yeah. Ultimate downer for the girlfriends. Yeah. And we basically hung out every single night in Miami. Are we going to tell like the real story? Sure, yeah. I mean, we should touch on it. So we essentially got introduced by one of two people we think... Two of our friends who said they put us together that night, but we were, you know, at a nightclub enjoying ourselves in Miami and drinking just a little bit. And yeah, we found ourselves being intro, chilling, and then it was four in the morning when the club was closing and we were getting kicked out and it was just the two of us left in the club. But like we literally like came to like we were both yeah. blackout and then we a little blackout. Okay, though. well both of us. It's a little gray. Okay, but both of us literally came to and realized that we were the only two people yeah. in the club, and we were in a really intense conversation. Remember? Yeah, we were talking about my dad's health. My dad suffered from cancer, um, now beat it twice, and an open heart surgery, which is voluntary. Other subject. Um, but we were talking about my dad and his sickness and all stuff, and I was like, why am I even telling this so, person yeah, so this we, like, who I don't we, even know? We came to the light drawn in the club, it's four in the morning, we're in a deep conversation about your dad's illness, and we're both like, who are you? Like, yeah, and what are we doing? And then, so I was walking Hannah out to get a taxi, put her in a taxi, and suddenly I realized I lost my phone, and she had lost her phone. So we both lost our phones, so there was no way to communicate. So I thought I was going to be here and go back in the club and find my phone. So I knocked on the door. They let me in. Brandon and I was told like, me to wait. To wait. I was like, wait for me. I'll be out here in one second. And of course, I come out and just an empty street. I left. I bounced. The lady I was courting had gone. Yeah, I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. I need to go home. It's four in the morning. Yeah. So Hannah left and then... We were kind of stuck with, you know, no way to contact each other. But luckily, it's Art Basel, which is a very small community in South Beach, um, a very small kind of event. So we ran into each other the next night at Soho House. 
in Soho Beach House and at the party they're having there in the tents and kind of saw each other and rekindled and hung out that night and then the next night we also hung out and then Hannah's friends all went home and I extended my trip by a day to stay with me which was pretty cool but I was staying with a friend in a room with two queen beds because that's what you do yeah, <laughs> when you're yeah, sleeping sleepover right? yeah so we had a sleepover which yeah. was really cool yeah, maybe you realize how chill you were just like oh it's your friend Denny alright what's up man <laughs> um, so we stayed and that was the beginning of our relationship also good to know you got a cell phone the next day I got a cell phone the next day immediately I did it and I didn't get a cell phone for almost Three weeks? No, six weeks. Six weeks? Out of... You know. I was like, what do you mean you didn't have a phone for six weeks? The reason why I didn't have a phone for six weeks is because I had just gotten out of this relationship. And then I had just met Brendan. And I just thought it would be easier for no one to be able to contact me. Especially. Especially the ex. Yeah. And I also felt like Brendan needed to work harder than to reach me. I had an iPad that had a line for me to call out, yeah. but no one could You had the new me. iPad that had the data program. Yeah, but no one, could, no one could reach me. But you could Skype out. Yes, and then we, when we got back to New York, we would email, and then we'd, like we'd, set, up. Up, we'd set up a date, and then we'd like Which spend... Which is kind of like old school courting. You had, yeah, to, you had to actually show up. Yeah. So I'd be like, hey, meet me here at 8, and you'd have to show up. It wasn't a text like, hey, I'm running late, whatever, you just... Appear. You Especially because my iPad only worked on Wi-Fi. It wasn't a real data plan. Oh, it wasn't? No. But I you also didn't bring your iPad to dinner and stuff. Exactly. You just yeah. like leave it, which was lovely because it's awkward. Um, <laughs> still, just bringing an iPad to dinner. Um, so that's kind of how we met. And then, you know, we hung out in New York back and forth and slowly formed our relationship, which is where we are now. Other questions people always wonder. I mean, maybe not on YouTube, but haven't asked, but in general, like, when do you move in together? And we came back to New York. I was DJing and managing a musician named Theophilus London uh, at the time, and I would be traveling a ton. So I had my own apartment in the West Village. Hannah had hers in the Lower East Side. And at one point, I was just gone so much, and every time I would come back, I would stay at Hannah's house. So, our apartment stay in his apartment so I just ended up leaving a bag there and putting my stuff in storage which was my friend's apartment I just kind of packed up got rid of my rent <laughs> and moved in to Zach's apartment which I never visited except for moving my stuff in um, and then I moved I didn't have a lot I moved here with one suitcase I didn't acquire too much after that sold my couch from bed whatever kept a bag at Hannah's place we're just kind of working it out of that bag well I traveled and then soon after, we decided, you know what? It's time to move. So we moved in together, and we found this really cute little cabin. So cute. It was a friend was renting it, but it actually had been passed down through... Multiple friends. Multiple and friends, Mother yeah. and friend. It was like our friend's mom was the first one to have it like in like the early 80s yeah. or something. And then it got passed down to like multiple people. Anyway, so we found it um, after this girl, Sarah Stodd, Inger, Stodinger, <laughs> was staying there. I'm actually wearing her shoes right now. She's a very well-known designer. And so, anyway, now she is. And we, she would, wanted to move to L.A., I think, actually. And yep. so we had heard about it, and we are like, maybe we should try and move in there. And that was in Soho. Um, behind a bar called Spring Lounge was really and a nail salon and you kind of walk through and you do a courtyard it super, cool. super cool so we kind of developed our first formal relationship there where we learned how to live with each other and learned a lot of things about co-living and sharing a space as anyone does when we get together what year was that? I'd say that was 2013 and that was a really cool place we had a lot of Parties, good times, memories, people staying on our couch for months at a time, friends crashing, all sorts of things. And I, again, learning how cool my future wife would be, even though I didn't know it was my future wife. But I kind of did. But I, you know, you just never know. All these falling in loves before, who would know? But I had a good feeling about this one. 
and you were so chill and still are so chill about friends coming to visit and dropping by and living, which is just awesome. I'll never forget that one time when I was on, oh, when I was on set for that movie, it was, yeah. like, I was, like, an extra. No movie. chick? Yeah, yeah, in Baltimore or whatever, and I remember, I was supposed to come home on a Sunday, Saturday night, they, like, wrapped us early, so I, like, hopped on a train, and I was coming home to, like, surprise you. I remember one of the cast members was like, I can't believe you're surprising your boyfriend on a Saturday night and he doesn't know. Like, and I was DJing. Yeah, like, get ready to like walk into a situation you don't want to see. And I was like, what? I fully like trust this human. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I never, I'll never forget. And sure enough, you walked in. I walked in. And I was with somebody. You were. And he was a giant black man named Face. And That's he correct. is the sweetest man on earth. I met a great guy at the club and brought him home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I my walked friend's in best friend. and we all just had like such a funny chat and he was, it was so cute. Yeah. We were talking about hustle. Yeah. Um, so like, that can go into the guy. card. Should you ever surprise the person you're dating? Yeah. Yes, you should. Could end up 50-50, who knows? But yeah, you, know, you don't know. <laughs> if you it trust them, it worked out really it's well. there on the good side. Another question we always get is, how do we start DJing? Do we DJ together? So Hannah started in college DJing at a little bar on campus by just DJing from her computer with a friend, throwing local parties, and just trying to get her friends to come to a space that they could all be at that wasn't a house. Yeah. And then you turned it into... And then I, I came home. Yeah, you came home to New York and, and hit up some people, and they gave you a look at some clubs, and she just started to work the late night club circuit and got, you know, kind of cut her teeth, so to speak, in the nightlife circuit. And that was like, I guess that was about 2000 and eight, nine. Yeah. And you and I didn't meet until 2011. So yeah. it was a total coincidence. Incidents that we both DJed. Yeah. And then how did I start? You started when you came to New York, um, you were working for your friend, Dan, mm -hmm. and um, you needed to make some more money because you weren't making enough money. And so while you had a full nine to five, you were also DJing five nights a week until four in the morning. And you started out DJing at this place called Pop Burger, mm -hmm. where um, you had a friend who was basically like the manager there. And so you knew you could eat for free there. So then you were eating for free, and then he was like, you gotta play some music if you're gonna eat for free. So then you started DJing, and randomly, the guy who owns Pop Burger is like a super cool guy who like knows all these cool people, and you saw him recently, and he was like, bro, I can't believe like what you turned into, um, which is really cool. But yeah, so Pop Burgers, it's where you up. popped off first, Ooh. and you like mm -hmm, that, and one. then you start DJing like greenhouse and like all of these. Oh my places. god, greenhouse! Yeah. I mean, I remember like going out to the club with you. Greenhouse, Southside, One Oak, Marquee Avenue, you name it. Well, that's how we started DJing. Yeah, and then obviously when we met, we were both like confused as to how we. Did We're the both same DJs, yeah. Profession and also hadn't met before. But then when you got representation, I was like, I need representation too. <laughs> and then you started a company, and then we were started. Then you guys would like handle my deal flow, you would handle your deal flow, mm -hmm. and then some deals came in for us together, which we did, and then we started to like not do as much as that mm -hmm. because we like wanted to keep our separate brands. Yeah. And so now when we do do stuff together, it's like pretty the, rare. It's yeah, and it's for the big bucks. For the big bucks. How do we keep the love within the love? How do you keep your relationship strong? And how to keep going. I think, you know, that's a long, complicated answer. But I think in this life, if you're so lucky to find someone like I found, who I jam with on so many levels from tastes, music, goals, personality, um, respect, uh, trust, 
um, you know, the finer things in life, caviar, travel, you know, just, yeah, travel, just how you choose to go about your day, really, which is in the, it might seem to be one of the smallest things, but it's one of the most important things, like how you navigate life is so important to have someone that complements that and also strives for the same things and is looking to navigate life in a similar way, but not the same way. Because if it's the same way, it's just going to be flat out boring. Yeah. And we're very similar. We love the same music. We love a lot of the same food. We love cooking at home together. We love seeing the world. We love meeting a new person at a bar. We love coconut water. We love tinctures. Actually, just you do, but I'm learning to love them. You like whatever. I, I love laundry. Yeah. She does not, but you're learning to love laundry. I love ironing. She hates iron. So there's things, obviously, you get what I'm saying. Find someone that has a similar passion and drive as you and wants to achieve the same things in life, but you're going to be different along the way, and that's what makes the story interesting. A very, like, key, like, even today, when you say, like, the day-to-day -day stuff, like, even today, like, I came in, I was flustered about something, and, like, I, like... Brendan was like, sat me down and was like, okay, well, what are your fears around this situation? And like, why is it like, why is it giving you anxiety? And so then like, I told him like the first thing. And then, so he then was like, here's a solution to your fear. So now that we've got that one done, what's your next fear? And we just kind of went through like each one of the things that was giving me anxiety. And he basically gave me a solution for each one of those things, which then not only gave me peace of mind, but then let me like focus on the things that I actually needed to focus on for my day and bring a whole new perspective to my day that I, I wasn't, because I'm also very much the type of person where if I don't talk about things and if I don't get them off my chest, then they'll dwell for the rest of the day and I feel like I cannot perform to the best of my ability because I think my head's not in the game. So communication is like so, so, so important. Um, but the only reason I'd be able to do that is because you get to know your partner so well and how to, you know, diffuse a situation. Like yeah. that was a very complex, complicated situation for us with some personal stuff we're dealing with. And it was, how can I help you work through that just as you help me work through things at other times? Mm -hmm. You know, it's important. There's a support system that needs to really exist between the two of you and... For us, we've built a really good one. And don't get me wrong, like, we fight. We don't have like crazy bluffs, but there's a lot of stuff we disagree on. Tears happen sometimes. I get flustered sometimes. I've never slept on the couch. We've never been so mad that I was like, I'm not sleeping in bed with you tonight. We're pretty good about handling things, getting them off our chest. Not, I think like that's what I learned in a lot of my past relationships is if you don't communicate and get things off your chest, they will just Fester. Fester and become such a bigger problem than they need to be. Whereas really, the other, your partner wants to get rid of it and get it off their chest too and find a solution to move on. And letting things go is really important. Yeah, we're both Scorpios, which I think brings like a lot of passion and a lot of creativity, but it also brings like a lot of know-it-all attitude, mm -hmm. which we both have. So... I think our biggest thing is like the, who has the last word. <laughs> I feel like we're always constantly yeah, battling like, for the last word. Yeah, I usually just give it to you. Which is actually kind of a sitcom at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> at, when when we're like really down to it and the we're last trying word. To, like one up each other on the last word, it's like we're <laughs> just like joking at that point because it's so ridiculous. So um, but that's like one of our things. Like and because we both are Scorpios, we do we are the type of people where we really do need to get things off of our chest 100 percent, a lot immediately yeah we can't let it like fester but we also just like call each other all day like even if we're in the same city and we've spent like two hours together already in the day like you'll call me like five times i'll call you five times like mm -hmm. just so like i don't know sometimes it's check just, in support share yeah. some a great meeting you just had and how excited you are yeah. You know, Hannah's really good about helping see my vision and help me archetype where I want to go in this life and kind of, yeah, give, you know, tips, tricks and solution hacks, advice, 
you know, all those things really matter. Or just getting some groceries. You know, we both love our Sundays so much, which if you follow us, we know. And we know that we love them, and you know we love them, and Sundays are so important for us. Because I had long distance relationships before, so this is kind of where that all came from. You know, the Sundays are for lovers, hashtag we use here and there, but used to use a lot. It was, you know, I had all these long distance relationships when I first moved here. I didn't date anyone in the city. I was kind of dating people from home or LA or whatever. And you realize like all week is cool. Saturday's cool because you're with your friends. You work during the week and Friday night's fun. But then Sunday, you just want to hang out with, you know, your friends, but you hung out with them on Saturday. So you want someone else. And it's a good time to see a movie, go grocery shopping, do nothing, chill at home, go to breakfast go see a play or whatever you do, sit in the park. And that's where it came from, Sundays. Sundays are for lovers. Mm -hmm. I love a Sunday with you. Me too. So I think the last important piece of the puzzle is where we come from. So I always like to say, big city girl, small, small town, town boy. boy. Um, I'm born and raised in Manhattan. I come from um, a mixed race fam, I'm black and Jewish, and I like grew up on the Upper West Side, I went to an all girls private high school in New York, um, and yeah, I'm like a classic Manhattan, third generation Manhattan city girl, like just doesn't get any more, doesn't get any more New York than yeah. that baby, I mean it does, I'm not like a fifth generation, yeah, 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 Brooklyn, to me, right, but yes, big city girl. Um, you big know. city values, big city life. Yeah. Grew up with the best of the best of them in you know, a prominent Upper East Side family, Upper West Side family, and you know, had the luxuries of New York. Mm -hmm. And Grew up fast. Grew up fast, you know, got in trouble along the way. All the as time. any kid did. Got kicked out of a school, mm -hmm. got put in another school, got sent away for a summer to, you know, learn more about life and nature and respect for people, all that kind of stuff, and then came back and got put in another school in Brooklyn where you had to commute every day, mm -hmm. an hour. Yeah. So yeah, Hannah had, you know, the New York life that, I don't know, maybe people dream of living when they're growing up. It's pretty, you know, every family obviously comes with drama, no matter who you are, from where you come from. From how much money you have, from whatever situation you have, from divorced parents, which Hannah has, and you know, since she was two, which you obviously learn about a lot from, with an older, two older siblings, and then four siblings from the second litter, which she always calls it, which I think is amazing, yeah. but just from, you know, a stepmom and, and her dad, and you know, lots of ways to learn to navigate, which is family's a whole other convo. Totally. I'm one of seven kids, which I feel like that not a lot of people know. Oh, yeah. That. Um, and then, flip side, Brendan comes from a family of four. So, two kids, two parents, who have been married for 46 years. Yeah. Shout um, out to Mares and Peafall. And... Relationship goals. Seriously. And... He grew up literally in a town of 2,500 people, one stoplight, mm -hmm. you know, there was- Two hours a, north of Toronto. There was like a river in his backyard, like a white picket fence, like a, you know, a golden retriever, like very- Small town, farm town, but we didn't have a farm. My dad's the lawyer in town, and you know, that was kind of, you know, my life growing up, we were, from a middle class fam in the town and, and went to a high school in another town because we didn't even have a high school in my town and still don't. And I went to elementary school in another town because I took French immersion, which I consider myself slightly bilingual and professionally bilingual after three to four drinks. I've never heard you say the word bilingual before. How do you say it? Bilingual? Bilingual. Bilingual? Bilingual? Brennan's very good at speaking French. She doesn't do it nearly enough, but... Um, <laughs> I also pronounce things in a strange Canadian way, or just my was, language. Yeah, my dad has his own language. He has his own language. It's Call true. it Fallish. So, yeah, I grew up in this very small town, which, you know, my parents um, worked really hard and were fortunate enough to 
do a lot of fantastic things for me that got me out of Durham. I, you know, we joined a private ski club, which was no small feat um, and expensive. And I thank you guys all the time. They sent me to summer camp and all boys camp, which was amazing for the month of July. And then I also went to ski camp in the summer because I started freestyle mogul skiing and that became a thing I did. So, and then we had a cottage in Muskoka where if you have or haven't seen is where we go a lot in the summer. So. Within all those things, I met a community and they kind of opened my eyes up to a bigger world than Durham, which is where I grew up. Um, shout out to Durham, I love you. Thank you for everything you ever did for me. Um, it taught me so many things about small town values and you know that life isn't easy for everyone and there's a lot of hard work that goes into just getting by. Um, and I went to school with all these great kids who came from very hardworking families. Um, you know, some days I'd stay at my friend's house, I'd go to a farm and we'd wake up before school at six and pick rocks and put them in piles so the cows wouldn't hurt their feet. True story. Never told you that. Um, that's just a little bit of my history. Other times I'd stay at houses where we didn't have to do that. Wow. I didn't stay over there too much. That happened once and I was like, this isn't for me. I'm kind of a clean guy and we're getting dirty before school. Um, but yeah, lots of hardworking people. So telling you all this because, you know, I really think it's important in our relationship and I really find it special from seeing our relationship within but also looking, taking a step out and looking at our relationship. The mix of big city values and small town values and how we meet in the middle, how Hannah can work a room of people and has taught me that to network, to come in, to hold your head high, to be so confident, to show that you have nothing to lose and just kind of, you know, take over a room conversation and have amazing energy is something I didn't have. I wasn't used to doing that. And I think for Hannah, I mean, you can speak to it, but from me, it's like learning that, you know, like every penny counts and like how hard do we want to work for this and how much effort do you have to put into things to make sure it happens and, you know, appreciating like the really small things in life that people don't have, you know, like all these luxuries you have in a city are just not luxuries for everyone in the world by far, let alone most people just in Canada, America, North America, places we grew up, you know, it's like being able to walk to the corner and get whatever you want or take a boxing class or have a table delivered or temporary furniture appear at your house at the click of a button. Like these things just don't exist and people have to work really hard for them. And so I think, you know, I've taught you a lot on that front. You've taught me a lot. And I think we coexist in a beautiful world because of it and have a very nice we share a very nice positive outlook on the world as it is and how we see life and how we're going to attack this life together and hopefully the life we're going to raise our kids with and that will be the beautiful combination of both i love it too and i love you anyway that's a little you know tidbit of life with brennan and hannah from our temporary sofa, <laughs> which we don't own. And but that's we, a whole other thing. We rented this for $43 a month, I will tell you that, which comes to, I think, I think it's around 1500 or it might be less than 1500 which for is, the year, which is, is insane. Probably the price of this couch, which you could own for many years. This is where savvy price branding comes yeah, in this you could buy this couch and own it for five years and it would cost way less but we didn't want to buy things because it just costs more to purchase it outright we only need it for two months before we start construction so theoretically this couch costs us a hundred dollars and it won't go to waste it's going to go back it's it came from someone else's house that rented it before it will go somewhere else after so it's good for the environment more so than wasting and it's affordable for us but it's way more affordable to buy a sofa. I don't know. It depends on what kind of sofa <laughs> yeah, you yeah. buy. Anyway. Sofas run like a really, a really They can, or at Ikea, this could be even cheaper. And it would probably look the same. Okay. This is enough on this one. <laughs> anyway, welcome to our world. Big city, small, penny pinching <laughs> town guy here who's quite cheap. Um, but we'll leave that for another episode for later on how we navigate this life through social media, how we earn things, 
how we leverage. leverage what we built as a brand to get things we want in this lifestyle because that's an important one too and I feel we do it in a different way and where we do spend people. our pennies yeah and how we do spend our money so anyway that's another episode this was fun we'll try and maybe do this every month or two yeah leave some stuff in the comments for us tell us what you want us to discuss um, this is obviously the first time we've ever yeah. done a couch sesh from our temp couch <laughs> and um you know we're happy to do more we love you guys and we appreciate you watching and yeah let us know how you felt so comments below anything you want questions dm them to us leave them below don't dm them to me don't dm them to me. she can't get back to all the dms too many dms this guy's on top of them though it's actually anyway. crazy your inbox is always at zero it's yeah. insane i work quickly and swiftly all right, guys, thank you for spending half hour with us, an hour. We don't really know how much time went by. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, we're just trying things out, but we love you. Thanks for the support. Subscribe to my YouTube. Follow him on Instagram. Check out our HB Fit YouTube. Check out my Instagram. And, you know, just find a loved one out there. Try and hopefully apply some of this knowledge or tips. Or don't. Take it. Do as you will. All right. Thank you.